Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Delaney if you're new here and make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow me just so that you can keep up with all that I'm doing and uploading every day in May. So today's video is going to be answering some questions about East Carolina University. I just graduated like last week so that's super weird but I've been getting a lot of questions from incoming freshmen and people that are interested in ECU so I wanted to go into a lot of detail on some topics that I feel like you really need to know about when you're going in. I'm gonna start off by doing a really in-depth conversation on nightlife and Greek life specifically because those are two topics everyone is asking me about. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased because I just want to give a disclaimer about that because I don't want people to come at my throat, but I was on the Panhellenic Executive Board. I was on the Executive Board of my sorority and obviously I was in a sorority, so I'm a little bit biased towards Greek life. Um, I'm obviously not going to give it too much insight onto like the rumors and random stuff like that because I don't want to say anything that I don't know for fact is true. So I will be kind of stating the facts and things you need to know, but if you're looking for me to talk about scandals or the certain chapters that have gotten kicked off and why, I honestly don't know the exact reasons. I don't feel comfortable sharing those, you know, speculations because it's just, it's not something I can confirm. So with that being said, I'm going to jump right in. So we're going to go ahead and start with nightlife because there is a lot of downtown scene and I feel like that's something really important to talk about. I'm also sharing some of my experiences, so please don't take that as me being biased towards any way, but you know, I want to share my experiences so that they're relatable, if that makes sense. So PBs, also known as Pantana Bobs, it is mainly just called PBs or Bobs. It is located right next to the west end of campus, so a lot of freshmen go there. I would say that this is one of the bars that is known for being where a lot of Greek people go. Um, they have some special events that they host like Summit Up and the Phi Gam Day Jam and they also are known for being an underclassman type of bar. You'll, if you go there you'll probably meet mostly uh, freshmen and sophomores uh, and you know it just depends on the day when you go there. But one of their best specials is Penny Draft which is on Tuesday nights. You can pay cover for if you're like 21 or whatever. You, you pay no matter what age you are, um, but you get a draft of beer for a penny. But you kind of need to bring one so that you can get the bartender's attention and actually get a draft of beer. Buggy's Bar is also a bar that is known for being where most Greek people go. Uh, they have ladies night, dueling pianos, and it's very, very popular. It was pretty popular starting my junior year. I went before and it's honestly one of my favorite bars when it's not too crowded. 519 is the bar right next to Bob's and it's probably not where you want to be. Uh, it's not very popular. It has an older crowd like out of college type of crowd and I think there was a shooting there but I don't really remember. Fifth is one of my favorite bars. It's a big Greek bar and it has like three parts. So there's kind of like a laid back pool table side that's really chill, then there's like a nightclub vibe, and then there's kind of a in-between part of those. Uh, it's pretty good though. It's for the most part, I think that's one of my favorite bars. The Way is a bar. Uh, I have never been. The Buck is a local bar. I've also never been, but it's like for typically people that are in post-grad or in, you know, a different stage of life, I guess. I personally never been, but I know some local friends that have been. It's just a more chill vibe, honestly. Rafters is a smaller bar. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's also known for being a lot of Greeks or they get rented out for Greek events. Um, it's smaller. It used to be 21 and up, and they recently changed that in the past couple of years. Um, but I think for that reason, it's still not as popular yet. Still Life, uh, there's one of these in Raleigh, but Still Life is typically a younger crowd. It is a nightclub vibe, like strobe lights, DJs, a just completely different type of vibe. If you go to Buggies, they're going to play Dixieland Delight. If you go to uh, Still Life, it's going to play like Justin Bieber remix. I don't know, festival, scene, I don't know. So it tends to be a younger crowd. A lot of people go there on their birthdays because they have this really cool like champagne, firework type of situation, sparklers, not fireworks, you guys get it. Um, one thing I've noticed about Still Life is that if you go there over the weekends or like on a break or something, like I went over I think fall break one night, um, you'll typically run into a lot of Marines. Um, so that's where people come from out of town and they go to still life because they don't know where else to go. Um, so you can kind of tell that people go there 
when they don't know what's going on. Uh, and then we've got Grumpy's, which is like a really low-key pub type of situation. Uh, it's more of a pre-game spot, and it's really just room for a bar, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I've gone there with some of my guy friends before, and I mean, it's a fun time, but it's just really relaxed and chill. Like, if you wanted to meet someone, I wouldn't really go there, but if you want to hang out with your friends, I would go there. Uh, and I would say a lot of frats rent it for events. So where are the biggest Greek bars to be rented? That would be PB's, Buggies, Fifth, sometimes Rafters for smaller events, uh, Still Life, and Grumpy's for frats. I don't, I've never seen a sorority rent Grumpy's, but it's still a good place. So that's pretty much the nightlife. Um, so there are three that I have marked as kind of being the underclassmen bars. Uh, with that being said, the ALE monitors those bars a lot. Not to say that they don't monitor the other ones, but these are the ones that I have firsthand seen them monitoring. That would be PB's, Buggies, and Still Life, because those typically are the ones where younger people are. I have personally seen friends or maybe even had experiences myself, where I've seen people interact with the ALE specifically at Bob's, Still Life, and Buggies. So it's possible, especially around Halloween, so just be careful, be safe, and you know, follow the law. All right, moving into Greek life. I feel like this is a very popular conversation. So again, I'm trying to be unbiased because obviously I was in a sorority. I graduated, but I was an alum. I'm, an, uh, I'm technically an alum of my sorority now. So obviously I know a lot about the Greek scene, but I wasn't in any of these chapters except for my own. So it's like hard to talk about my experience with them when I wasn't in them. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start with fraternities. So these are the fraternities that have either been at ECU or came to ECU during my time there. So some of them have been kicked off, some of them came later. These are the ones that off the very top of my head, I can remember being at ECU. I'm probably forgetting some. It is what it is. It is what it is. So we have SIGEP, Delta Chi, Phi Ta, SAE, Theta Chi, KA, Sig Pi, Sig Nu, Pi Lam, Phi Gam, ATO, Chi Phi, Delta Sig, Sig Ta, Kappa Sig, Pi Cap, Pike, Alpha Sig, and Lambda Chi. I think that's all of them, but honestly, did I say SAE? I don't even know, um, but yeah. So who has been kicked off? During my time at ECU, these are the fraternities that are kicked off and have not been back since. So basically if a fraternity is kicked off, based on what I know, they have to wait to be reinstated on the campus until the last member graduates so that they can basically start the fraternity over again. In my time at ECU, I have seen these fraternities kicked off. SIGEP, Delta Chi, Phi Ta, SAE, Pi Cap, and Pike. I also forgot to say Teak got kicked off. Um, and they gave their house up. So seven fraternities, I've seen seven fraternities kicked off during my time at ECU that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, there has been a lot of rumors around them. I honestly couldn't tell you a single reason as to why any of them got kicked off. Like I don't know the specific story that led to them getting kicked off. Maybe hazing allegations, maybe they weren't uh, following the Greek rules, I don't know. Uh, so like I'm not gonna speculate and kind of share rumors because I truthfully don't know why They got kicked off. I only know like the rumors and speculations of like what the campus has said, but like So of the seven fraternities that were kicked off at my time at ECU four of them had houses So those houses then had to be reallocated to other Greek chapters that were in need of them because not every fraternity or sorority has a house so those that had houses prior to getting kicked off included SIGEP, Phi Ta, Pi Cap, and Teak. So those four houses were then reallocated to other chapters. I just wanna name off which fraternities have chapter houses because not all of them do. So as I've graduated, this is who now has a chapter house. So Theta Chi, KA, Sig Pi, Sig Nu, Kappa Sig, and Sig Ta, and Delta Sig all have houses. So that leaves ATO, Phi Gam, Chi Phi, Pi Lam, Alpha Sig, and Lambda Chi without houses. The Phi Ta house went to Sig Ta. The Sig Ep house went to Alpha Gamma Delta, which is a sorority. The Teak house went to Phi Mu, which is a sorority. 
and the pie cap house now belongs to sig pie uh sig new recently built their own house ka has had the same house since i got to school theta kai built their own house my freshman year and i think that honestly covers almost everyone now we're moving into sororities there are 10 active chapters on ECU's campus right now for sororities, for NPC sororities. There is one suspended chapter and that is Alpha Phi. That is a fact. I don't know why the exact reason they got kicked off was. Again, I've only heard the speculations of that it was potentially with a fraternity. But again, I don't know. So the, the 10 active chapters right now include 80 Pi, AGD, AO Pi, AZD, Kyo, DZ, KD, FIMU, TRISIG, and Zeta. Here's what I know. Alpha Phi was suspended probably two years ago now. They're gonna come back at some point as long as they're in good standing. They still have their house. No one is using their house, but their letters have been taken down. So they intend to keep their house and to basically have it when they come back in a couple years. Uh, but no one else is using it right now, and that's all I know about that. As for the other sororities, Alpha Gam and Phi Mu both have fraternity houses that they have since taken over when the fraternities were kicked off. Alpha Gam has the Sig Ep house, and so I know that they put a lot of renovation money into that house. And I don't really know all the details. What I do know is the rumor, which this is for any Greek house, not just that one. The rumor is that when those fraternities come back, if they can come back, then they get to take their houses back because they were the original owners. How do I know that that's correct? So Find You originally had Kappa Sig's house. Kappa Sig then came back. So they had the original rights to the house, so they were able to take their house back, which left Find You in jeopardy of not having a house at all. From there, Teak was kicked off, and Find You took over Teak's house and renovated that. I don't know about Teak's standing in regards to the Greek community. I don't know if they're coming back. However, Find You is in their house for like, until the last member of Teak graduates that I know of. I honestly, I don't know. So Alpha Gam is in Sig Ep's house. They basically will get to keep the house as long as Sig Ep doesn't come back. But if Sig Ep comes back, then they're rumored to have the original rights to the house, therefore taking the house back and leaving Alpha Gam in jeopardy of not having a house. Now I know that you're probably concerned as to like how that works and why can't they just build their own house? Well, there are certain requirements of a house that chapters have to have. Like I don't know all of them, but I have seen my fraternity friends have to figure out how to get a house. And in that, looking for a house or looking into building a house, you have to make sure that it meets certain requirements. Like I don't think you can do new construction right now. There's also just not that much land, but the house has to sit a certain number of yards away from the street in order to be meeting the Greek chapter guidelines of like housing requirements or something like that. So basically the only thing left for me to tell you is which chapters were newer to the campus. This doesn't make them any bit lesser than other chapters. It might make them slightly less established in terms of numbers, or popularity, things like that. But honestly, the the popularity of each chapter changes over the course of every four years. So some chapters that I saw that were really popular my freshman year are now bottom of the totem pole. And so it changes all the time. You never really know which chapter is the best. So I'm just gonna say that. But sororities, there were two new sororities added in my time at ECU. Alpha Gam was added like my sophomore or junior year. Um, so they obviously had to start with zero numbers and do a lot of heavy recruiting to build their chapter up to what it is now. Find You came like a couple years before I got to ECU. So they're still building too. But I would say both of those chapters are now the same size as all the other chapters. So that's not really something to worry about, but they are newer. That is also part of why their housing situation has been a little bit different. In terms of fraternities, there are a few fraternities that have come in to the Greek life system at ECU since I came. So, so Sigma Nu was a new chapter my freshman year. They basically restarted their chapter. That's what I know. Lambda Chi was actually started this past year. Um, so I guess they had a chapter and they were suspended and now they're back. Uh, Kappa Sig, I don't know how long they were kicked off, but I know they came back because they took their house back. Find you had the Kappa Sig house for like a year or two of my time, then Kappa Sig came back. So yeah, a chapter being new doesn't really mean anything, but it does mean that they kind of have to work a little bit harder in the beginning to really find their chapter over again. That's part of why I mention 
the chapters that are newer. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is probably the most in-depth explanation that I can give into the Greek life at ECU and the nightlife at ECU. I'm sure you guys have a lot more questions if you're a freshman, so feel free to DM me on Instagram, and if I need to make a part two to this video, I will. I just feel like this is already really lengthy, and I don't want to make this too long because I don't want you guys to lose interest, but if you have any questions, please DM me on social media and I would be happy to answer. Um, one specific thing I did want to address before ending off this video is someone asked me about any superstitions to be aware of uh, in regards to the campus. So the only one that I know of is to not walk under the cupola, which is kind of like the arch in the middle of campus. If you walk under that, it basically means that you will not graduate in four years. Uh, I have still not walked under it and I graduated. I just haven't really gotten the chance to since I've graduated, but that is the only, you know, superstitious thing I've heard. Again, I really tried to be unbiased in this video because I don't want to, I don't want my, I don't want my way of thinking to really impact how anyone's Greek journey or journey at ECU is. I want you guys to make your own decisions and so I can only tell you guys as much fact as I know uh, I tried to not involve too many rumors or speculations, but obviously it happens because it is what it is. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow with something new. Bye, everyone.